All righty, we are four past the hour. Uh, welcome everybody, wherever you are, to uh, May 17th, 2023, Qbert Community Meeting. Um, to start us off, uh, do we have any new people um, here today that would like to introduce themselves or just kind of tell them a little bit about yourselves? Um, yeah, uh, my name is Victor Lu. I watched um, one of the, your presentation lately. Uh, yeah, just interested in how it works, um, especially the, the API machinery related, uh, just the architecture. Wonderful. Welcome, Victor. Um, we'll, if you've got any, any questions in particular, welcome to throw them into the open floor um, down here. Um, otherwise, at the end, I'll leave a bit of time once we've gone through the agenda and you're welcome to, to ask any questions or, or anything like that, if, you, if you'd like. Um, so, um, yeah, for those that haven't um, had to bear with me hosting one of these meetings, when I share my screen, for whatever reason, I can't see my mouse cursor. So I'm going to have to just drag and drop tabs. Uh, so we're having a look at the Qbert 1.0 release schedule um we must have tagged a beta which i think might be what um daniel's going to be talking about and he's got a few points on the agenda so i'm going to pass it over to him actually i'm not really uh talking about the um about the qbert uh, v1.0 itself i'm just uh wow. trying to capture a little bit about the Qubit CI updates that we need for enabling this. So um, you so you were not completely wrong, but you're just partially right. Let's <laughs> say it like that. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> okay. So um, I want to uh, talk today about um, how where we stand regarding Qubit CI. So the general process most of the time is that we are always trying to align uh, in terms of Kubernetes with having some. Kubernetes provider that we are using for testing to have the latest version of Kubernetes itself available, uh, which we with which we run our functional tests, and that's what Kubernetes CI is about. So um, to give you a little um, overview in the nutshell, where we stand at the moment is um, that we are um, uh, at least uh, I, I think that probably Ryan last week told you already that we had a problem with namespace deletion um, on the latest Kubernetes 1.27 provider, uh, which actually got fixed by a PR brought up by Lubo. Thanks for that. Um, so the periodics look pretty good now. So we have uh, on all lanes, on all 21, uh, um, uh, 27 lanes, um, uh, pretty good or even completely green runs. Um, the pre-submits um, haven't been uh, enabled yet, but actually we have a PR um, in the um, in the works that should be merged at least soon, or maybe has already been merged. I'm not exactly sure, but it should be merged by end of the day today. Uh, that will uh, actually then enable to run all pre-submits for the four six that we have, which is compute, operator, network, and storage. Um, so that you will probably see some uh, failing pre-submits on your PRs. Don't get confused by that. We are just trying to collect some data on that so, um, so that we know how where we are standing regarding compatibility to the latest Kubernetes release. Um, other than that, um, we are still waiting regarding Qubit CI updates. So I guess you're not... Uh, aware of that, but currently our latest Qubit uh, provider for 127 is still based on the RC, which of course is not really good because we are already, um, I think the minor version should already be, or or the, the release version should already be .1, um, but we are still blocked right now on a problem that we have itself in Qubit CI, which is based on a kernel, on a kernel bug. But we are waiting. This this kernel update should come in any minute. We have decided to wait at, until the end of the week. 
Um, if it still doesn't get into Centaur Stream 8, which is the base for our nodes that uh, we are running Kubernetes with, um, we are going to uh, downgrade the kernel version on the on the Node OS so that we can fix this. Um, yeah, that's uh, in a nutshell what um, what I can present regarding CI updates. Any questions on that? No, thank you. <laughs> Thanks everyone for um, bearing with me and my long talking. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, and thanks for staying on top of all that. Uh, Howard, I believe you've got the next point. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my plot is a little bit long. Um, so here is some update on QBvert on ARM64. I have read, written down the document for QBvert on ARM64. Uh, as we discussed on um, what we need to do to make QBvert officially release ARM64 image, um, uh, some people comment me to write down the uh, list of Q core features uh, on ARM64. So I do following things. Uh, I uh, verify the supported and unsupported device on ARM64 platform. Uh, the status of all future gates on ARM64 and uh, verify the all page, pages under the subtitle operations and the virtual machine. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, I write down them into document and put it in this, in this uh, PR. So I'm wondering, uh, are there any other future I need to verify and put into this document? So maybe I can um, put it into an email and uh, uh, send it to the email group. group. Should I? Um, I, I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, the next step I want to do is to enable conformance tests on ARM64 platform. And uh, because the image Fedora with test, uh, test tooling image are needed, and now we don't have ARM64. Uh, I'm 64 version Fedora with test tooling image. So I submit a patch theory to build multi arc uh, image. Uh, yes, uh, this is a summary of the patch series. Yeah, uh, and uh, my question is if we, uh, like the E2E conformance test runs well on ARM64 platform, uh, what else we need to do before we can officially release the ARM64 uh, uh, images or binaries? Uh, hi, Howard. I think that uh, we, we don't have an immediate answer uh, for that. Uh, that is because that is why it's the silence. So I believe let's take it either offline or uh, to the cube the mailing list so we can discuss it further. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. Great, thanks. Okay, thank you, everyone. That's great. Um, so it, it really sounds like we're we're coming close to having a Kubernetes sixty four release. Um, yeah, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> And hopefully you get some uh, comments, questions, and support on the uh, mailing list thread uh, once we've got that out there. Um, and if not, we'll we'll raise again this meeting and see if we can, we can get traction on this. This is awesome. Um, thank you very much, Howard. Thank you. And unless anyone has any additional questions or comments for Howard, um, we'll move on to Igor's CPU hot plug point. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just to, to update you that we are uh, we want to push forward uh, the design proposal about uh, CPU hot plug and that uh, you are more than welcome to chime in uh, to discuss the design or and, or and close possible gaps if there are any. Um, yeah, and hopefully we we are looking forward to merge it. Uh, I don't know by the end of this week. Or starting the next week, uh, and uh, for your information, we already have a working POC, which will be also published soon. Uh, yeah, and this is this will be actually a cool feature. You will be able to increase the number of your virtual CPUs during virtual machine runtime. Uh, yeah, and that's it basically for me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Igor. Um, but that's great. The CPU hot plug and ARM64 seem like long-term features that I know I've been hearing about and reading about for a long time. Very nice to see them kind of coming towards the finish line now. Well done, everyone. Um, I've got a quick point here before we move on, uh, which is uh, both KubeCon and Open Source Summit China 2023 and KubeCon North America 2023. Their CFPs are open. And they both close at the same time, which is June 18th, which is one month and one day from now. Um, the, um, the one in China is at the end of September. I think that involves the 23rd, maybe that's just the year. Um, and the one in North America, which is in Chicago, is the start of November. Um, yeah, so by uh, all means, if you need any help, support, reviews, if you've got any questions, um, please hit me up. Um, but also, I'll be away for the next couple of weeks. So that gives you a couple of weeks to, to think a lot about uh, potential proposals. Um, I've also sent an email about this last week with a lot more details um, and also a call for if anyone has any ideas for a, like a hackathon. They call it ContribFest at KubeCon. Um, if you've got any ideas for a KubeCon one, then uh, it would be great to submit. And we need a relatively well-rounded uh, proposal for when we do that. So I'll leave that with everyone. Um, we've got some pull requests here. Um, let me just drag it up. Okay, is anyone taking on? Okay, so this might be an automatic PR that we don't need to pay attention to, in which case we can move on. Um, does this speak to anyone that is on the call currently? Um, actually, yeah, that, that's absolutely true what you're saying. This is an automated, automatically created PR that we don't, that of course we need to look at that, but we don't need to um, discuss this here, I'd say. Wonderful, gone. All right, let me pull my next one up. Yes. Uh, ah, this is Howard's PR. Yes, uh, when I were firing the future gates, I found this future gate, uh, there is no code related to this future gate. So, I think if we can 
uh, remove it or put it in the deprecate list. All right, I can't navigate around that, but um, I'll leave it there for someone to take a look at. And the third, um, or did anyone else want to have a comment on that while we're here and how it's it? All righty. Uh, that third one uh, looks like uh, Corel and Lee have both jumped onto, so we're going to look at that. The mailing list review, I think uh, there's at least comments on all of the um, threads from last week, so we don't need to jump into them. But if anyone has anything that they'd like to, anything from the threads, um, I did notice there's a monitoring design proposal. Um, actually, is anyone on the call at the moment that uh, attended the vhost meeting that I think we had this morning. All righty. Well, we've got two bugs then. Um, all righty. Problem assigning BGPU as mediated device. Uh, I'm gonna go a pair of eyes here. Um, it, this actually looks like it's an OpenShift bug rather than a QVert bug, is it? Fair enough comment. It should be raised on OpenShift virtualization rather than QVert. Sounds fair. Cool. Oh, all right. I'll leave a comment on that a little bit later. And then I think the other one is another one of Howard's. Yes, this is a list of all future gates. Uh, the status of all future gates are on 64. There's some are support and some are not support. Uh, the unsupport uh, mainly caused by two reasons. One is a uh, CPU future, like some future only supports x86 uh, CPU. And some uh, uh, some future gates not support ARM because of the dependency. Uh, like uh, for example, uh, the let me see uh, the a hot plug volume gate. This one uh, it rely, relies on the CDI project, but the CDI project uh, does not support. Uh, have not supported on ARM yet. Yes, so we don't support this future gate. Well, I thought I saw someone from the CDI project here, but it, it was mistaken or they've left. Um, Wow, that's a big matrix. All right. Um, wonderful. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our bug scrub. Um, yeah. Howard, you're, you're going to include uh, this in the mailing list thread that you create, I presume? Uh, yeah, I have created a document for it and put it oh, okay. in the user guide. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you.
in which case we'll jump back to a thing. I'm just making sure that nothing's been added. All righty. Um, does, before we close out, does anyone have anything that they wish to add? Any questions, any comments, um, any celebrations for anyone? Anything at all? Uh, yeah, I have some question if there's no other topic. Sure thing. Yeah, I, uh, so I watched, um, joined one of the call uh, where uh, Kilbert was discussed. Uh, my understanding is Kilbert uh, from that talk is actually a, a separate uh, infrastructure. It's not part of the, um, I don't know even it, it runs, I, I haven't uh, looked in details like it doesn't work run a, on a separate Kubernetes cluster or it doesn't even run Kubernetes cluster. Um, so yeah, I'm just uh, trying to get more information about how it works uh, in relation to the overall, the API machinery or the Kubernetes API uh, infrastructure. Is there any, I guess, first of all, um, is, I guess there's any, any videos or documentation regarding this? Yes, there is. Um, I, I can't see my mouse when I share my screen, um, but perhaps I can connect with you offline on Slack. Um, if you want to ping me in the Kubernetes workspace, I'm a burden um, and I can uh, direct you to a couple of um, articles, blogs, and some, some videos. Some of them might be a little bit old, um, but I, I think they'll sufficiently explain what you're after. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. Um, unless there was someone on this call that wanted to have a quick recap, but I suspect, yeah, we can, I can um, help Victor with some resources to follow up. All right. Um, does anyone else have anything they wish to add before we close out? All righty. We'll take it from there. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. I hope you have a pleasant week and um, see you next. Well, you might all see you next week. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.